Welcome back guys! It's time for another incursion into the past to see how the first extreme quad-core CPU from Intel has stood the test of time. So this is the QX6700 which was released in 2006. It is the first quad core from the core 2 generation, thus you may consider this as the CPU that started the multi-core era. It was built on a 65 nanometer process and it was clocked at 2.6 GHz. With 8 MB of L2 catch and it had a global warming TDP of 130 watts. This was the best CPU from Intel at that time. Being under the Extreme branding, it had the desired unlocked multiplier, but also carried the standard Intel Extreme fee of $1000. Well, 12 years later I got one for like 20 bucks, all around 15 pounds from eBay. Right then, I needed a matching board on the 775 socket and some nice DDR2 RAM. Here we have an XFX 750i SLI motherboard and a pair of 2GB sticks of OCZ Reaper X 800MHz, which look like from a torture movie, but I love them. Paired everything with an EVGA GTX 960 so we can test some modern games. For now I will not do any overclocking in this video at least, with the motherboard being this sold, it still has some quirks and I don't want an explosion this soon. Thus we will take things easy and play everything safe at stock settings. As always, everything I used is detailed in the description below. Let's start with a run in Cinebench. As you would expect, it takes a while to complete the run. It will do it in approximately 3.5 minutes. No record breaker here, obviously. Apparently it has the same performance as a third generation Ivy Bridge low power i5. Well, we came here for the games. The goal is to have fluid gameplay at 1080p. Plus 30-40 FPS is my target at the minimum. As for the settings, I will show them for each game as we progress. First up is Battlefield 4. This is a big surprise, since as you saw at Ultra, this game is completely playable and fluid. The GPU is being used almost at maximum, so bottlenecking isn't that bad at all. As for our QX6700, it still has some juice left in it. Of course the numbers are varying all over the place, but the targeted average is achieved. Bioshock Infinite is another highly optimized game in our repertoire. As the previous scenario, everything is left on max settings and we noted the same varying behavior. There's a lot of fluctuation regarding the CPU and GPU usage. I don't know why is that for sure yet, but again we have what we came for. Counter-Strike Global Offensive is no surprise at all. I think this game will run even on a fax machine. So this CPU will do just fine. Now let's go back in time for a game closer to the CPU's era, Crisis Warhead. Well, here we have mixed feelings. The system is struggling at 1080p no matter what quality settings are selected. I went through them all and the results are pretty much the same. We barely get 30 FPS as an average. Metro Last Light was very demanding and even at medium settings with every eye candy turned off, we still didn't get our numbers. Now let's wrap things up with one more game. I had high hopes for The Witcher 3 since it's very well optimized in its latest patch, but the CPU is just too old. No matter what I did, 720p, you name it, even at the lowest settings, we didn't even see 20 FPS. Oh well, we tried. 
What did we discover today? Well, out of our 6 games, we found out that the CPU will do the job at maximum or not at all. Plain and simple. It's very weird, but understandable given its age. Well, what about the rest, you ask? Ask for web browsing and regular stuff, it will do just fine. Very snappy and nothing to complain about. Of course, the power consumption is from another planet, but the idea was to see its performance. Alas, it was fun for me to test it. Let me know down in the comments below if you want me to overclock the CPU to see if things improve. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Alex out.